Have you had your espresso come out in drips at first but then speed up towards the end? Are you hitting perfect ratios and timings but the espresso shot still tastes sour? Well, one of the big reasons for this might be puck prep. So in this video, I'm going to show you how prepping your puck properly is going to help you fix those sour shots and get the best out of your espresso setup. Say that three times quickly. Prepping puck properly. Prepping puck properly. Prepping puck properly. <laughs> So first, and this is optional, is to get a bottomless portafilter if you can. This makes it much easier to see what's going on with your espresso puck than if you're using a spouted portafilter. There are manufacturer specific options and also third party ones, but make sure you buy one that fits your machine specifically. You don't want to damage the inside of your group head. I almost always use mine to see much more of what's going on during extraction. Next step, I usually recommend a light mist spray of water on your coffee beans before you put them in your grinder. This is called the Ross Droplet Technique or RD and it helps to reduce clumping which is caused by static, which is especially useful on high RPM or flat bar grinders. Now once you have your coffee grinds in your portafilter, you're going to use the Weiss distribution technique, or WDT. I know, RDT, WDT, don't worry about the names, you don't have to know that. This is just a little tool with some needles that will help you break up big boulders and improve distribution in your portafilter. There are some fancy ones that I'm sure do a very good job, but you don't have to go out and buy something expensive. This is one of the cheapest upgrades you can do. Just use a cork and a few sewing needles. My third step is a distribution tool like this one. I like using one of these to flatten the bed before tamping, and while I don't have any conclusive evidence that these are absolutely essential, I do feel a lot better about the distribution when I use one of these. The main thing is that if you're making coffee for friends or even in a cafe, it's much more hygienic to use a distribution tool than to level off with your finger. For home users, there's no need to go out and buy a super expensive distribution tool. I use a simple one I got for around $15 and it works just fine. I'll leave links to everything I talk about in this video in the doobly what's it. Finally, you want a good tamper that fits well. Make sure it's flush to the sides. Measure the exact diameter of your portafilter and get a tamper that fits precisely. If you leave even a millimeter ring around the outside, you'll create a less compressed area that the water can more easily channel through. The conventional wisdom is to use around 30 pounds of pressure, which you can figure out by putting your portafilter on a house scale and tamping down a few times so you can know what that feels like. I've seen some people in cafes putting their whole weight into the tamp. You don't need to do that. There are also tamps with a pressure limiter that click when you tamp down with it, but these tend to be much more expensive than the simple metal one I have. These are helpful, but definitely not essential, as it is good to learn how much pressure you're tamping with. I also want to mention puck screens here. I know it's espresso and we have expensive equipment, but $25 to $50 for a small mesh ring seems pretty excessive to me, and if I'm going to put my foot down somewhere, it might as well be here. It seems like using a puck screen just makes it easier to knock out the puck afterwards and it keeps the shower screen clean. I also heard in the Home Espresso Aficionados group that it might help to prevent degradation at higher extraction ratios like one to three. So if this is something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll look into it. You could also use an AeroPress paper filter, but if it's not the exact size of your porter filter, you're likely to get more channeling, not less. Here's how much better a shot can look with good puck prep. A few important things to note. Number one, don't change your dose as a proxy for grind size or good puck prep. A very dense coffee might have a lower volume after grinding, and so you'll end up with a shallow bed. In that case, you might want to dose more, grind a little bit coarser, but still end up with that one to two ratio espresso. So if you raise your dose from 18 to 20 grams, you should also raise your extracted weight out from 36 to 40. Anyway, I'm sure I'm gonna need to update this video next month when the Charlie distribution technique or CDT starts to catch on. But for now, that's it. If you found this video useful, give it a like and click here if you want to see all the basics on how to dial in espresso. It'll take some practice, but I'm confident that you'll be able to get much better espresso if you use what you found out in this video and the dialing in video combined. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.